This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Hello. Oh, must be uh, Mr. Fuller, please. This is me. How you doing today, sir? Or tonight, rather? Still learning. Still learning, yes, sir. Uh, my name is Brother Ron Hurd. I'm from uh, Memphis. It's an honor to talk to you. I'm a friend of uh, Sister Sabrina Johnson. And uh, I actually, I was hoping I would see you at your, uh, the homegoing celebration of your friend, uh, Dr. Welsing. I was wondering if I could meet with you tomorrow before I go back to Memphis. I'm in the media, and I have something to uh, give you as well. Um, it'll be an honor to interview you a short period of time. I also give you the gift I have for you. Well, on um, the first part, uh, I probably wouldn't have time to, to have the meeting. I guess I'll try to catch you there. I'll call you early in advance. I hope I can meet you in person next time I, uh, I'm in town. Well, do you have a book? Oh, uh, no, sir. I have a, well, I do. I, I run a non Yeah, I have a, uh, actually, I have a plaque to give you, a Lifetime Achievement Award for my organization. It's a nonprofit, but we uh, promote art and uh, culture and media and education. And it's called We All Be. No, well, I meant my book. Uh, yeah, I got I got all your books. Yes, sir, I got your books. Oh, okay, because uh, otherwise I'd have to see to it. In order for you to have the interview, you you would have to be somewhat familiar with, you know, well, not not necessarily, but it would help. Yes, sir, I know it definitely would help because everything else would confuse me if I didn't <laughs> get your books. Because I know Dr. Wilson, she spoke very, of course, she spoke very highly of your work, and you're very influential over her as well as countless other people. So I, I, get, I definitely got your books, your workbook and everything. Yes, sir. Okay, well, just, just whenever, you you know, you say you're in Memphis. Yes, sir, Memphis, Tennessee. Right. Well, whenever you... Uh, uh, okay. We, I don't we, do any personal appearances and whatnot. In fact, I was in Tennessee at Fisk. That was the last oh, wow. personal appearance I did, but that was in 2007. Yes, sir. So you don't really travel that much at all, then? You just I don't travel at all. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Let's talk. It'll be an honor to talk to you. I know your workload has increased since the past of your friend, so I know you got a lot of work to do. Well, not not appreciably. I was kind of thinking that people might might be doing that, but uh, I think that uh, the people who listen to Dr. Wilson are just uh, really, they haven't gotten over the fact that, you know, that she's passed so swiftly. Yes, sir. And it was completely unexpected. Yes, sir. Uh, she showed no signs of any kind of uh, stopping or slowing down or anything. She showed absolutely no signs of that. And uh, But I think that stroke may have been caused by uh, some type of blood clot mm -hmm. uh, that, that can come on at any time. And... Uh, so I think that's why it was so unexpected, because she showed no signs of illness at all, period. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I know people was looking at that primary school next door causing all that noise that probably increased her stress level. I think that contributed to it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I know she did a, a final call interview three years ago, that, and she talked about how the noise level was so bothersome that her doctors told her that she could have a stroke or heart attack. That's dealing with the noise because they, they tore down a natural tree barrier, from my understanding, and they violated the city ordinance as it pertains to noise. So I just thought that was very unfortunate mm -hmm. that they would do her like that. So she was a victim of white supremacy racism. Oh, sure. That's a that's the that 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 is the logical assumption. You always you always say that anyway. That's, yes, sir. In, in fact, that's the way that I write. You know. Uh, because that's the only system that there is, so therefore anything that happens within a system, it's the system's fault. Yes, sir. You know, there, there, there is no, according to what I say, which is not necessarily true, mm -hmm. but I believe it's true. Yes, sir. And I call it the system of white supremacy. It's the dominant system on the planet. Yes, sir. And so all other so-called systems are uh, just secondary or non-existent and really just subsistence to the system of, of racism. 
see, for three says a man white supremacy, according to what I've written and been saying for years, all one and the same. There is no other form of racism. There are other forms of mistreatment, but there's no other form of racism except the system of white supremacy. So they are the usual suspects anytime anything happens to someone of color that shouldn't happen. Why? Because they are the ones who are in charge. Yes, sir. And also that means that no black person really dies of natural causes then. Is that correct to say that there's no such thing as natural causes as a cause of death if you're dealing with, dealing with that type of system? Well, it's always a tender to the system because all people die from something. Yes, sir. And so, therefore, whatever is the dominant environment of the something that the people are in, it's logical because I always say this follows the logic. It's logical that the system contributed to it. It contributed to their being sustained and also contributed to their death. In other words, uh, I always say that black people are born in a prison. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, we're already prisoners of war. We, we were, we, we were, you know, illegitimate subjects in captivity right from the beginning, ever since the beginning of white supremacy. Yes, sir. So we came under that. So, uh, you know, all of our people that came before us have been in that system worldwide. It's not, it's not like there are some people who are subject to white supremacy and other people who are not. If you are a person of color, you come under the prison system of white supremacy, which is a worldwide system. So it's just a matter of if you get health care within the prison system, well, you can say that the prison system is sustaining you with health care. And then when you don't get it, well, then you didn't get it because the system wasn't working to support you getting it. Mm. See, in other words, the warden, like the captain of any ship, is always to blame for what goes on in the prison. Just like the captain of the ship is always to blame if anything goes the way it shouldn't go on the ship, particularly if the slip ship is a slave ship in the first place. So that's already a stroke against the ship and its captains and its crew members mm. who are dominant over the, uh, over the cargo, which... Black people, the black people of the planet, are the cargo of this planet, which is a ship, really, mm -hmm. in a way of speaking. Mm. I mean, it's in motion. Yes, I mean, you know, and we're just on it, but it's also a prison system. So when we say that we are prisoners of war, whatever happens to me is a prisoner of war. And the war never should have been started in the first place. And I'm a captive of that prison system and of the warden and the guards and all like that, they are to blame for whatever happens to me. It shouldn't happen. Because I never should have been a prisoner in the first place. I did nothing to earn that. Right. By their own admission, they are the ones who bragged about we made slaves of the dark people up until just the last century. Mm. They bragged about it before then. Now they're backpedaling and trying to even, and, and if we don't watch them closely, in another 50 years, they'll be saying it never even existed. Mm. They'll say that we, first of all, they'll probably start off saying that we were indentured servants, really. Yes, sir. You know. so they're already doing it, right? They say interns, right? In the, in the textbooks, they saying we was interns. Yeah, they'll, paid internship. they'll slowly, uh, it'll take them about <laughs> 75 years to get around to it, but they'll slowly try to ease away from mm. the fact that it ever even happened. Yes, sir. If you don't watch them closely, you can't let them slide on nothing. In fact, this Holocaust, um, this uh, African-American museum they're building here, mm -hmm. I'm saying, just like the Holocaust Museum, it should, the heavy part of that entire African-American museum should be about everything that has to do with Slavery and the Belgian Congo and the Leopold and all of that. Yes, sir. It should cover all of that. I mean, that should be firmly rooted as the anchor, not the accomplishments of George Washington Carver and and all kind of paintings and whatnot. I mean, uh, the Harlem Renaissance and all this type of thing. No, 
the Jews at least understand that. That's why they have, you know, the, if they wanted to, they could have a Jewish museum where they just showed, you know, all of the accomplishments of Einstein, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No. When they built the museum, they said, this is about the hits that we took. Yes, sir. And we don't want anybody to forget it. Mm. And that's what our whole museum is about. When you go in there, you don't see nothing about our accomplishments, which are considerable. I mean, you know, they could talk about Bill Gates and, you know, uh, and Bezos and, and all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. I think that they're Jewish, you know. But they don't do that at the Holocaust Museum. Mm -hmm. They just talk about how they were treated. Because they say the good stuff will take care of itself. It's that bad stuff that they want people to remember. But, see, they want black people to say, oh, let's say, you know, the slavery is bygone. Ah, da, 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 you know, yes, uh, segregation, lynching and all of that. Ah, no, no, no. Show me your paintings. Mm. Show me your pottery. Show me your kente cloth. See, in other words, they, 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 if you don't watch them, this is what they'll do with that. That has to be guarded against. Otherwise, we will keep taking these hits like we are taking them right here in 2016. Yes, sir. So we have to stick that in the face of the white supremacists all the time. We are not talking about our accomplishments at all. We are talking about mistreatment. Get the mistreatment straight first. Then we can work on the accomplishments as a leisure. Wow. Everybody can join in and do that. But look at this mess that we have everywhere. Everywhere you have people of color. Now they're fighting all this, you know, manufactured disease in Brazil. Mm -hmm. What is it? Zika? Yeah. Yes. See what I mean? All of this nonsense. Tuberculosis is on the rise again. Among what? People of color. Mm -hmm. South Africa, even though Mandela became president and all like that, is still a big mess. Black people don't have anything. So even if we're talking about, you know, black people having their own land and their own country and all like that, it's so-called black countries everywhere. Jamaica, you know, you name it. Mm -hmm. Every last one of them is in a state of retardation. Totally. Mm. Haiti is a, is a disgrace on the planet. I, I guess so this thing, all of this talk that's been going on for 50 or 60 years about, well, what we need is another Wall Street and all like that. Look around at all of the black Wall Streets that you have in the Congo and everywhere else. Mm. They're non-existent. So if you don't have them there, what does that tell you? Where you have plenty of land and water and minerals. And the reason you don't have them is the white supremacist said you ain't going to get them. I don't care where you are. Mm. Because I will see to it that you won't get them. Wow. You know, it's interesting what you said. I'll think about Haiti. And you said about the, about the prisons and ships. I'm thinking about the Clintons. They control Haiti right now. And now so you got Hillary running for president. And it seems like a lot of black people are in love with the Clintons, albeit that they had a lot to do with the uh, black people being involved in the prison industry complex in a very bad way. And I just want to know why you feel like we're so in love or infatuated with this system that we believe that voting will solve our problems or, or liberate us. Well, see, it's, it's not just the individuals. I mean, you know, really, you know, so I don't even bother with that. Mm -hmm. I just say the entire world system has to change, which and so we are the sh should be the, the spear point. Yes, sir. Of making that change, and, and I'm talking about in record time. This this long drawn out process that we have been, you know, and, and even our language. I mean, we say, well, you know, we need more people to join the struggle. Mm -hmm. Just using that term gets in the way. Mm -hmm. We should be moving in with lightning speed. In 2016, I yes, mean, sir. moving like lightning, mm. and 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 we should never say that we have made any progress. 
because progress should be made by the lights are out in the stadium and we got the high score on the scoreboard. Hmm. That's when we call it progress, not one minute before. Yes, sir. I mean, this 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 10-yard line, I mean, to the goal, I mean, and all like that, or at the 50-yard line and stopping and having celebrations and whatnot, that should be considered pure nonsense hmm. because it's not logical. Black people more than anybody shouldn't measure time like that or progress like that. Yes, sir. I think I saw an ad some years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I holding you up here? No, no, sir. It's an honor. I'm, I'm trying to take all this knowledge in. I'm still uh, learning myself. <laughs> I, I saw I saw an ad uh, several years ago. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, and it, it, it keeps coming back to mind. A football coach came in at half, and so the guys was all celebrating and high fiving and all like that. Mm-hmm. And so the football coach started, you know. Uh, just telling everybody, I mean, the quarterback, he said, you know, you call yourself a quarterback, said next year you're going to be all the way back out of this stadium if you perform like you're performing now. Not. And you, you call yourself, I mean, uh, a pass receiver, said, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he was just giving everybody head. Mm-hmm. He said, I want this team to always play when they're 50 points ahead like they are 50 points behind. He said, that's the way you'll always be a winner. Mm. Wow. And that should be black people's mentality right now on everything. Whenever white people approach us anywhere in the world and start talking about, well, you know, Oprah Winfrey has it, and we're going to say, we don't even have nothing. Yes, sir. Using that cliche uh, saying that Trina Turner made some years ago, we haven't even got started. Hmm. Even the best of us haven't even got started. Started from where? From where we should be, that's where. Mm. See what I mean? Yes, sir. By now. We should be further than anybody has ever been in history Mm. by now. That should be the way that we look at it. And see, if we look at it that way, we'll probably get that way. Yes, sir. But the white supremacists has always want us to take two or three baby steps and say, see, you're doing all right for some Negroes who are so backward, a bunch of savages. You're doing pretty good, you know. Hmm. Yeah, it's not up to white standards, but after all, you all are not white. So, I mean, you know, when you take three or four baby steps, open a new grocery store or, or, or liquor store, I mean, you're all supposed to celebrate like, you know, that's the end of life. Hmm. And we got to get out of that mentality because they have baited us into that type of mentality. But our position should be, we are not satisfied until there is nobody who is black on this planet who is suffering from any type of mistreatment or any type of lack of resources for being a full measure of person that he or she should be. No exceptions. Yes, sir. Now, I'm just saying just talking like that and thinking like that, because people usually go in the direction that they're talking and thinking. Mm. Just, but just, you know, the way that I'm saying it now, just just think that if every black person on the planet thought that way right now. Oh, wow. It would be power. It would be a force of nature. Can't yes, stop it. That, I'm <laughs> saying that within itself is power. Yes, sir. I'm talking about barefoot black people that they were thinking, hey, you know, I mean, no, 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 no. We're talking about the whole planet, everywhere, every yes, village. Mm. There's no such thing as somebody who is a black person who is homeless. That's, that's not, that's supposed to be impossible in 2016. Yes, sir. Suppose we just start talking that way. And all we got to do is just start doing it. Mm. At least talk that way. You know, oh, I mean, that's you know like that. that's it, very doesn't, it doesn't cost you nothing to talk that way. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bec- and because it's true, mm. there should be no person on this planet, really. Yes, sir. With all the facilities that are on this planet, with all the forest fires that you have, I mean, that burn up wood all the time, mm. and you have people that don't have a shelter, 
that's supposed to be impossible in 2016. Yes, sir. Everybody's supposed to have some place to go when the sun goes down, that they can call, this is my home. Yes, sir. And particularly black people who have been denied everything. Mm. We should have all of that by now. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about reparations, we're not talking about any money. We should talk about repairing everything. Mm. And not only that, building everything that needs to be built for the next 200, 600 years mm. and get it done in the next 10. Wow. Look at Kennedy. I mean, who? I was around mm -hmm. when Kennedy said, hey, you know what? People have been talking about the moon for, what, millions of years, I guess. Mm -hmm. He said, let's do it in 10. Let's mm. go there and check it out. Mm -hmm. You know. People have been talking about the moon for, for, you know, thousands of years at least. Yes, sir. All right. John Kennedy said, hey, why not just go set foot on there and, and check, check it out? Just take a look around. And, you know, they say, well, uh, when? Uh, you know, in the next two, three hundred years? Or no. Let's do it in the next ten. And mm. you know what? They mm. did it. You yes, know sir. why? Because they were thinking that way. That's why. Mm. Everything starts with a thought. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay, I don't want to go any further with that, but I'm saying this is this is where I, I come from here in 2016, and I think that everybody needs to at least consider being on that page. Uh, you just start thinking like that and talking like that. Ain't no telling what might happen. I agree with you 100%. You know what's interesting? You said that I, I saw this documentary recently called uh, Coconut Revolution. You ever heard of it? Oh, Mr. Fuller? Yes, sir. You ever heard there's a documentary called Coconut Revolution? No, I haven't. It was done back about 15 years ago. It's about these black indigenous people on the island of Bougainville outside of New Papua Guinea in Australia. And they took on the world's largest coal mining company uh, to kick them off the island because of the damage they was doing to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And all they had was coconut. And they used the coconut to uh, create uh, gas for the, the vehicles that were left behind by the uh, corporation. They made their own guns. They used the coconut to heal themselves, to treat wounds. And they fought this company and kicked them off the island. And um, they, they waged a war, a revolution with them. And they actually took on the military of New Papua Guinea. They took on the mercenaries that were sent in by the co corporation. And they kicked them all off the island, but they was willing to pay their price. They, you know, thousands of them died. But they mm -hmm. fought back and they won. But it's not really talked about. You know, it's not really well known like it should be. And that happened in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. But the documentary is online. So what you was talking about is what they was thinking about. And they did it. And people thought they were crazy. But they also practiced, I believe, black liberation theology because they were very spiritual people. And they was, you know, they, they, they created their own like uh, revolutionary songs. And they wasn't singing We Shall Overcome. They said we're about to get it right now. So mm -hmm. and they did it and it's not talked about because people don't even know about it. And I just learned about what they did just a couple of weeks ago by watching the documentary online. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. But I, uh, but uh, and, and you take that same basic frame of mind and expand it worldwide. Yes, sir. And then you codify it, which I say that's the best way to go about doing it. That's just my opinion. Yes, sir. I mean, because. That's the that's the missing link. The the white supremacists are successful at what they do because they codify everything. Exactly. They have a code for every move they make. Yes, sir. Okay. We don't have anything similar to that. No, sir. I mean, we are mostly just a bundle of emotions. And yes, we, sir. We, we react emotionally to almost everything that happens, rather than scientifically. Yes, sir. See, whereas the white supremacists are totally scientific. And just like anybody who taps into science, science is more successful than just going about doing things any kind of old way. I mean, depending on how you feel at the moment. Yes, sir. That, that never works against absolute science. Yes, sir. And so all we have to do is just, you know, use as a vehicle the science that came with the universe. Yes, sir. Cause and effect. That's all science is. Cause and effect. Study what causes things 
and what effect it has, and then you come up with something that will correspond to it. And this is how all diseases are cured. This is how transportation systems are evolved and all like that, by people just studying cause and effect. That's all. We don't do that. I mean, and the white supremacists train us not to think that way. Yes, sir. They, 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 they want, always want black people to be governed by emotions, not attached to logic. Emotions do serve a purpose. Yes, sir. We are very emotional people. But emotions have to be attached to logic. But the white supremacists have carefully taught us you can be logical or you can be emotional, but you can't be both. Mm. And we have bought into the emotional part wholesale. And we think just being emotion is going to always talk about how we feel rather than what we think. Mm. And the right. white supremacists take advantage of us in court and everything else. That's right. Stand right there in front of the judge. Well, Your Honor, that's how I felt at the moment. Say, yeah, but what you did was stupid. <laughs> I mean, a child of three could see that it was stupid. Yes, sir. Say, yeah, but if that, but I was caught up in the moment. See, that's us always getting caught up in the moment, not thinking about. Wait a minute. What about tomorrow? See what I mean? <laughs> Yes, See, we are not a tomorrow people. We are right at the moment. That's it. Just like cows and horses, right in the moment. And that's why we are, you know, beast of burden, like cows and horses. But we were trained that way. That's how you train a slave. Don't think about nothing else except what's going on right this minute. Don't plan anything. A slave who makes plans is dangerous. The white supremacists know that. Yeah, well, so much for what I got to say. But this, this is, I just want to throw out a few wavelengths of where I am at this moment, at this time. It's on to receive them, man. I'm, I'm blessed to receive some information that I can use and empower myself and other people with to amplify. I mean, it's just an honor talking to you. I think sir. it's worthy of consideration. I mean, just having that type of amplification of what we're supposed to be about in 2016. Yes, sir. Let's say, hey, let, let's think on a grand scale, even if we don't know what to do. Because everything starts with a thought. Like the illustration I gave about John Kennedy saying going to the moon. I mean, you know, nobody's been thinking about going to any moon. See what I mean? Nobody's yes, been sir. thinking about that. And the Russians fired off that Sputnik thing, and I think that's what caused Kennedy to think about it. He wasn't thinking about it before then. And then he said, well, since they got a, a little something spinning around in orbit there, hey, why not we trump that by going to the moon? And somebody say, well, what do you mean, go to the moon? Go to the moon for what? You know, well, you know, to see if we can do it. And ain't no telling Mike what might come from it. What came from it is all kind of satellites and communications devices and all kind of stuff like that. See what I mean? That's what happens when you start thinking on a big scale. You wind up doing something on a big scale, but if you think on a small scale, you'll wind up just looking forward to another liquor store in the hood. Yes, sir. And we should be way beyond that by now. Definitely. A ribbon cutting ceremony of another liquor store in the hood. That's 1920s thinking. We should be thinking on a world scale. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, sir. Yeah, I, I appreciate your call. You. It's an honor to talk to you. Thank you for making my night, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you for making mine. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Good night. Take care, Dr. Fuller.